And good afternoon. I hope your weekend is looking all right. It's 17 minutes past 12. I'm Simon Morrikin on BBC Radio Derby. How do you remember loved ones that have been in your life and are now no longer with us? How do you remember them? Do you have photos around the house? Do you talk to them now and again? Do you look back at old pictures that maybe you have in a collection somewhere? Well, I'm asking these questions because two friends are asking us to write about our lost loved one's imaginary perfect day, all for a new book that will be published this summer. A Day For You will be a compilation of short stories written about a lost partner, relative, friend, or pretty much anyone that's not in your life anymore, somebody that you really miss. Well, the idea came when Kate Lane wrote about an imagined day for her own mum. Well, Kate and her friend Mickey Partridge are behind the book. Good afternoon, Kate and Mickey. Hello. Hello, Simon. Hi, Simon. Oh, so lovely to jo be joined by you two today. Um, I just love the idea of this. It sparked off so many ideas in my mind the minute I was told about this idea. But first, Kate, tell us, tell us your story. Well, my mum died age 51 uh, over 20 years ago now. She was um, poorly for a week. It turned out to be in leukemia. She was gone and we were left absolutely reeling. And uh, as time goes by, um, you're left with a load of sad memories from when the person's ill in the hospital. But she always said, every time we went to a tea shop, oh, I'd love a little tea shop. Without fail, we'd order tea and scones and then suddenly it would be, oh, I'd love a little tea shop. And so I thought, I'm going to write her her tea shop. I'm going to write a little story and at least on the page, give her her tea shop. And it was, it was really cathartic writing it. And I mentioned it to Mickey and to other friends and um, the idea has taken off. And so many people I've... have other stories, days they would give someone if only they could. I just love it. I think it's such a clever and wonderful idea because there's something about getting lost in your imagination, which I imagine many authors would, would, would jump up and say, yeah, that's what we do all the time. But something I'd never thought about doing, but the, the minute you think of a, someone that you loved and you've lost, the idea of sitting in your own company for maybe a few hours and writing a story of an imagined day out, it's almost like a therapy, isn't it, Kate? Oh, it is, definitely, yes. And it's a lovely way to celebrate someone as well. I mean, of course, my mum is never going to have her tea shop, but in the book, she can, she does. And um, I can imagine her there now. It's it's really healing in a strange sort of way. It was lovely to write. And uh, when I think of mum now, I just fantasise about her in her tea shop, bustling away. She would have absolutely loved one. I know this. And I, I've given it her in the only way I can. I love that. And Kate, what's that, what sort of sweet treats would she have in the tea shop? What sort of sweet treats did you imagine? Little cupcakes or... Oh, bars, she was an chocolate bars. So it, 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 Victoria sponges, fruit cake, all the old favourites. Yeah, fine. Oh, I love sugar, that. Earl Grey tea. She would have been absolute elements. And of course, there's no budget limit here, is there, Kate? With your imagination, you can be as 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 imaginative as you like. Did you did you find it sad to write this book and the story of your mum? No, not at all, really. It's, it's a very short story. I wrote it down. But it only came to 500 words. And so I thought we could, we could collate these, these stories. And um, so many of the people we've spoken to said, oh, I can write this for my dad. I can write this for my mum. We've had so many stories already start to come in. And uh, it's been really fascinating speaking to people that people's imaginations run riot. It can be something realistic. It can be something bonkers. If somebody you lost wanted to be an astronaut, let them write the story for them. Just brilliant. Kate, the first person I thought of um, when I discovered your wonderful book idea was Sandra, cleaner Sandra, who I used to work with in Stoke-on-Trent at a radio station there. And she became famous to the listeners because I would make such a fuss of her on the radio because she was such a character. And we lost her about six years ago. And the idea that came to mind when, when I thought about your book was she used to love her. She'd just go on holiday in the UK. And I used to say to her, where are you going when she's got a week off? And she used to love to go to Kirby, which is a little town near Liverpool. And I would ask oh, her, I said, well, what makes you go to Kirby? And do you know what she said? She said, there's a good weather spoons there. <laughs> That's well, why she would go to Kirby. Anyway. 
<laughs> oh, and she just loved it. I mean, it used to make me roll on the floor with laughter, but that was just her little pleasure that she enjoyed. And so I thought, I could, you know, I would write the story about me and Sandra popping on a train from Stoke-on-Trent, going up to Kirby and going out, spending an afternoon in the Weatherspoons. And it, it made me smile, Kate, just thinking about that. It does. It becomes real in your own head, doesn't it? <laughs> I can just picture it. Mickey, tell me more about your involvement with the book. The book's called A Day For You. Mickey, what, what are you doing with the book? Um, Kate and I are doing pretty much the same thing. We're getting in touch. We're dealing with the people that get in touch with us. We're replying to the emails. We're all involved in the editing of the stories. Um, a lot of people can't manage to do 500 words on their own, but they can just start with some bullet points or some ideas, as Kate said. If your dad wanted to be an astronaut, let us know about it and we'll help put the story together. Um, Brilliant. I so, what, what? Because, sorry, my mum no, carry on. a scholarship to an art college, but back in the 1930s, there was no way that her dad was going to let her go. So my perfect day for my mum would be her at a young age, getting ready for her first day at the art college. These stories can be about anybody, about anything. And you don't need to be able to write the whole thing yourself. Just send the ideas in. So that's part, most, most part of what I'm doing with Kate. Brilliant. Yeah, if someone's not confident enough to sit right, that sit down and write it all themselves, you can help them out. I think that's wonderful. Um, what sort of stories would you like from people? Are you letting their imaginations run wild? Is there a place to start? Does it, does it have to be mum? Does it have to be dad? Or can it be cleaner, Sandra? Can it be anybody that you've lost? It can be anybody that's passed through your life and is not with us anymore. Um, for example, a young person who always wanted to meet their best friend and the best friend happened to be a unicorn. It really doesn't matter. We've had people going on holiday. We've had people attending weddings that they were not going to live long enough to be around for. It can be anybody that has passed through your life and is no longer with us. Very inspiring idea. Um, when people have written a story or a few bullet points, a few ideas down, how do they get involved with you? The most straightforward way is to go along to our website, which is adayforyou.co.uk. It's got lots of buttons and links that you can see where we are all over social media. And our email address is there too. It's a day for you book at gmail.com. People just need to get in touch the way that they feel most comfortable. And we're happy to get help them get started. I imagine you're going to get a lot of people getting involved with this because it's such a clever, lovely, thoughtful idea. How will you, how many stories will you put in? Will there be a limit if you get inundated? We're hoping for 200 stories for this first book. But uh, we are going, we're planning to go on to do another couple of books after this as well. Brilliant. And where will the money go from the sale of the books? Sorry? Where will the money go from the sale of the books? We are working with Cruise Bereavement Care, which we think is a very appropriate charity to be involved with. 25% of the profit will be going to them. And the rest, if we make, it, we make more money, then we'll be able to put it into our next book. Just great. How many stories have you got so far? We've got about 21 so far, so a bit of a way to go. But um, they're so varied already. It's absolutely lovely. We've, been, we've not long started this. It's a very new project. This came about as a conversation just before New Year, and it's taken off from there. So really, it's very new and very fresh, but we will have to cap it at the 200 stories. And then hopefully more books to follow. A great oh, idea. Ideas. Yeah, more, more collaborations, uh, oh. more, more stories to tell. Brilliant. Love it to speak to you both. Kate and Mickey Partridge, who are behind the book. So the book is called A Day For You, a compilation of short stories that you can write about a lost partner, relative, friend, pretty much anyone that's not in your life anymore that you'd like to imagine and fantasise about what you would do together for a day if you had that. Oh, I think it's such a clever idea. Thank you, Kate Lane and Mickey Partridge. If you want to find out more, I think it's something that most of us listening to think, yeah, I'd like to get involved with that. If you feel the same, you can search for them on Facebook, A Day For You, or you can email a day for you book at gmail.com. It's BBC Radio Derby.